chapter 30. If Thanksgiving was wonderful, Christmas was paradise. By now, Grayson had officially moved out of the Y and into 101 Banshell Boulevard. Thanks to his long acquaintanceship with the locker room attendant, he and Maniac were privileged to continue using the Y's shower facilities at their pleasure. For decoration outside, they nailed a wreath to the door. There is only one small window, but it still had no sill to hold a candle, so some spray snow had to do. Inside was another story. Santa's elves themselves would, not ha would have felt at home. Strings of popcorn swooped across the ceiling. Evergreen branches flared at random, dispersing their piney aroma. Wherever there were a few vacant square inches, something Christmassy appeared. A matchbox creche, a porcelain Santa, a partridge in a pear tree. One day, Grayson dragged a pair of tree limbs in and started sawing away. When he was finished, a wooden reindeer stood in the room, big enough for Maniac to ride. Of course, the tree got the most attention of all. By the time the two of them finished trimming it, their tree trimming instincts having languished for so many Christmases, hardly a pine needle could be seen under the tinsel and balls and whatnot. In fact, though they were delighted with their efforts, the urge to trim was still full upon them. One room was simply too small to hold the spirit bursting. So they went outside and crossed the creek and tramped the woods until they came to a fine and proper evergreen. And there, their footsteps muffled by the carpet of pine needles, their every breath and whispered word arrayed in frosty white, they trimmed their second tree. This time the ornaments were nature's brilliant red and yellow necklaces of bittersweet pungent pine cones, wine red clusters of sumac berries, abandoned bird bodied bloats of milkweed, delicate thumb-sized goblets of cream, Queen Anne's lace.